This video is going to show you how to use the I2C protocol to get input into your Android Things application. We'll discuss the Raspberry Pi Rainbow Hat and its sensors, in this case the temperature sensor which we'll use to measure air temperature surrounding your Pi. Let's get started. I2C stands for Inter Integrated Circuit. I2C works with multiple pins on your board but only uses one pin to transfer data. This is known as a serial interface. There are three pins involved a clock pin, the data pin, and a ground pin. I2C has a master device that controls communication, initiation, and multiple slaves, each individually addressable. But don't worry, Andrew thinks abstracts most of this detail away for you. Our Raspberry Pi is now plugged in and connected via ADB ready for development. We have the rainbow hat connected to the top of our Raspberry Pi. This hat has a lot of peripherals, and amongst them the BMP280 temperature sensor. We are going to code our app so that we can check what the ambient local temperature is around our device in degrees Celsius. The temperature sensor is right in the middle of the rainbow hat board, just above the LCD display. When working with the rainbow hat, we can see how each of the peripherals on the hat is connected to our Raspberry Pi by looking at the pinout diagram. To understand how each peripheral works and determine the protocol needed to talk to it, we should consult the rainbow hat documentation and if needed, the specific peripherals datasheet. In the documentation shown here, we can see the temperature sensor described simply as temperature slash pressure and it says it is via BMP280 I2C 0x77. This is the hint we need to tell us to use the I2C protocol for our communication with the sensor. 0x77 is the individual I2C address of the sensor and BMP280 is the name of the chip. As it suggests we should read the datasheet if we want to know more details. Looking at this diagram we can see at the top left BMC2 and BMC3 are used for I2C. Clicking on BMC2 it then explains the alternative name is I2C1. We should remember this for later reference. I2C is the communication protocol for sending packets of bytes. However, what is contained in those bytes is propriety to the sensor. For example, this temperature sensor is going to send us degrees Celsius, but how do we know it is Celsius? And how do we know what number base it is going to send them as? For this information, we have to check the datasheet. As you can see in the technical reference, it says, see the BMP280 datasheet for details. Let's do that. A quick Google gives us an Adafruit datasheet for our sensor. Let's keep this tab open for later reference. Okay, let's program the temperature sensor. Here I have an Android Things project already set up in Android Studio. If you aren't sure how to get your project to this point, you can revisit the previous first app lesson for instructions. First, we create an instance of peripheral manager service using this code. This is the Android Things SDK class that allows us to open connections to different board pins using the different available protocols. Using this instance, we want to open an I2C connection. The open method takes two parameters. First is the pin address we saw earlier on, on the pinout diagram, and the second is the individual I2C peripheral address we read in the technical documentation. When we open this connection, we are given back an I2C bus variable that will now allow us to communicate using the Android Things SDK I2C class. We'll use this variable in multiple Android activity lifecycle methods, that's why we make it a field. Notice that we wrap the open I2C device call in a try-catch block. This is because the method, and most other methods we will use in the future, all throw a potential I.O. exception. This is due to the fact that we're dealing with hardware, and at any moment the pin or the peripheral could become unavailable, for instance because of a loose wire. At that point, calling the method will throw this exception. We are assuming that all our wires are nicely connected, and if we do get one of these I.O. exceptions, it would be really bad for our app, and actually we want to crash straight away, so we can diagnose the problem as soon as it happens. That's why in the catch block we throw an illegal state exception, as we are not expecting nor wanting this to happen. This is known as failing fast, and is a clean code best practice. The benefit of this is our bus variable is either a fully instantiated field at this point, or our app has crashed. Therefore, from this point on, there is no need to check if our bus field is null, it never is. Opening a connection to a pin is capturing this pin as your resource. And like with all resource management, it is good practice to release resources once you have finished with them. Also, if we have an open connection to a pin, no other code can open a connection to that same pin until we close our connection. Since we open the connection to our pin in the onCreate method, we should use the symmetrically matching pair from the Android lifecycle to close the connection. Therefore, we close the I2C bus connection in onDestroy using this code. Again, close can throw an I.O. exception. We can't do anything about this if we get an exception, but we can log it out so that we know next time our app starts if something unexpected had happened in the past. To speed things up, I have already read the temperature sensor datasheet for us. In it, it explains that whenever we read the temperature from the sensor, 
it needs to be individually calibrated against an algorithm of the peripheral manufacturer's creation. This algorithm has four inputs, the temperature and three calibration numbers we need to read off the sensor. We read the calibration data with this code. Here we use the I2C API method read reg word. This method takes an address as a parameter and gives us back one byte of data. We do this three times to read and store the calibration data into an array. Let's create a handler that we can post runnables to. These runnables will read the temperature at a fixed rate. We create the handler using the main threads looper, meaning we post messages on the main thread. Reading the temperature is a lightweight task, and this gives us a straightforward implementation. The data sheet tells us how to read the temperature. It shows that the most significant byte of the temperature is in a register with the name 0xFA, and then two further bytes are needed for a full reading. It then mentions to read chapter 3.9, which has some further caveats on the reading temperature. We'll come to them in a second. Now that we know how to read the temperature, we implement it with this code. The read reg buffer method takes three arguments. First, the address to start reading at, which we know from the datasheet, is 0xFA. Then an output variable, which is the buffer it will write into. And the third argument is how many byte registers to read, which the datasheet tells us is three. When this executes, it puts the raw temperature sensor reading into our data byte array. Our sampled raw temperature then needs to be compensated as explained in the datasheet. It uses the compensation data we read earlier. This is a very specific piece of code to this sensor and so I've done the courtesy of writing it out from the datasheet and hiding it away in this separate class. It's not something that needs to be learnt to understand I2C. However, here is the code here. Once we've done this, the value that comes out the other side is our temperature reading in degrees Celsius. Hook up the runnable to run when the app starts, adding this code to the onStart method. Have the runnable repeat itself by posting again every time it gets to the end. And for best practice, always remember to remove callbacks using the Android lifecycle symmetrically matching method, which in this case is onStop like this. That's it. You now understand how the Android Things I2C input communication with peripherals works. You can interface with a temperature sensor reading its words and buffers, also understanding data sheets to make sense of the temperature data. This knowledge also transfers to reading other data sheets and coding I2C peripherals such as accelerometers, pressure sensors or fingerprint readers.